Hey guys, Ben here, and uh, before we get this show rolling, I just wanted to say uh, something real quick. Um, we've come a long way, and uh, here we are. This is basically part 11 of uh, my Summoner's War series, and uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for all the love and the support you've shown me. Uh, thanks to all my subscribers for all the likes, comments, shares, favorites, you name it. You guys make my day every single time, and I would also like to thank my guest, Draco, a uh, big fan of your work, man, and uh, truly, I truly appreciate um, you coming here and uh, helping us out. So, and last but not least, I have some great announcements that uh, will take place by the end of this video, so you guys stick around and let's get this show rolling! Alright, and before we get to the questions, I just want to apologize about the delay. It was due to some technical problems. And uh, here we go. So the first question is from uh, Fu Yu Shen. I hope I'm saying it right. And he says, Yo dude, from what I have seen in the game and on Reddit, there has been some controversies regarding who to use as a support character in the arena team. So, um, it appears that M Megan would top the list among the most popular supports. We see her everywhere in the top 100 arena, but I would like to ask how would other supports fare uh, compared to her? So, for example, Shannon or Bernard, etc. Pros and cons. And I would also like some clarification on the matter. So, what do you think, Drago? The best support to me and uh, that I have seen in the uh, top 100 are Bernard, Megan, um, Seek. He's more of like a attack supporter, but he's still, I still categorize him as support, but he's a, really a attack supporter. Um, uh, Chloe, uh, let's see who else. Um, I mean, I, you see a little bit of Shannon here and there, but uh, Shannon to me is more of a PVE monster uh, or, or support and um, because uh, in order for Shannon to be effective you need somebody like a Bernard uh, to uh, boost up her attack gauge <clears throat> because her buff doesn't um, boost attack gauge so you know it's just it's just a regular buff and it doesn't do anything um, why Megan is so popular is because <clears throat> not only it that she buffs she also boosts the attack gauge so in turn if you make her super fast uh, in turn uh, your team goes uh, is the first to attack most of the time and with that boosted you know buff um, you can sometimes in the in the match within like the first one or two turns so um, that's why she is so popular because because of her buff uh, Bernard is up there. Um, the more I get up closer to top 100, the more I see Bernards, and the more I'm starting to be scared of Bernards because they uh, have the same base speed as a uh, Chloe, and these guys are super fast, especially with their uh, their buff, which is a 20% uh, increase in attack gauge, as well as a speed buff. So. Um, with him in there, your team attacks uh, very fast. So he's another one of the top supporters there. Um, Seek is another one, but for Seek to really be effective, uh, you really have to put in uh, or build a team around a Rage Blade or around Crit because his buff increases attack and increases Crit. So. Um, you, you, it kind of depends on your team, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes Megan is better, and sometimes Seek is better. Uh, sometimes Bernard is better. It just really depends on your team and how you have your team set up. So, you know, 
for instance, if you're running a speed leader with the Megan, um, you want an all out like attacker. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna put Bernard in there uh, in, in place of Megan because Bernard doesn't offer, really offer any attack, um, attack buff to kind of get that, um, that one shot in there. Uh, Megan provides that because she does the attack and defense buff. So um, the only reason you will put Bernard in there is if now I've seen a combo now that I've been noticing. It's a Bernard with a Megan combo. Okay, now that shit's deadly right there. So what they do is uh, they run a speed support or a speed leader with Bernard just super fast. Because he's he's a lot easier to make fast than Megan. Megan's base uh, speed is only like 97, so she's a lot harder to make fast. But when Bernard buffs, and then it'll be uh, Megan's turn because she's, you know, so fast that she goes second. She will buff, and then that in turn makes that whole team just super strong because they're gonna be fast now, and then they're gonna be buffed up in attack. So that's the new new uh, combo that I have been seeing um, Shannon like I said Shannon's more of a defense or not defense a uh, a dungeon buffer and uh, it's just because her buff doesn't really do anything besides just uh, attack and defense buff um, it doesn't provide anything for PvP um, according to like attack gauge um, and then you also have uh, some other supporters but they're not really sought after like the water bounty hunter is just another bernard um bernard's uh buff cooldown is a lot faster than the uh the water bounty hunter so that's why bernard and plus bernard's a lot faster too for base speed so um those are pretty much the top supporters right there it's gonna be chloe it's gonna be megan bernard and uh, seek is what you're gonna uh, run into a lot in the uh, top and uh, top tier brackets. So uh, if you have all those in your in your roster, you are pretty much set. Um, you can kind of build any team you want with whatever buffer you need. Um, because uh, in the higher tiers, for me, since I only have mostly just four monsters that I depend on, it's very hard for me, uh, especially. Uh, in the higher tiers to to uh, do well uh, because I don't really have a much of a roster at the moment so I kind of have to pick my matches and uh, once you have your roster set you know they're all ruined up they're all five star max six star max uh, PvP becomes a lot lot easier so um, what I would do in the beginning is pick four four monsters that have nice synergy whether it's a you know speed leader you know megan bernard whatever um and then two attackers which they would do just fine with that setup i did that setup when i i got my lucian and you know it took me very very far you know i was i was regularly in top uh top five thousand or top ten thousand or whatever so <clears throat> having a nice uh four four person squad would take you pretty far until you start reaching like the top 300 that's when you start start to need a, a nice roster where you can kind of pick and choose uh, your map your uh, your team so there you have it Ooh, and I think uh, this in-depth analysis by Drago also answers uh, another question by another member or subscriber uh, which is Okairu and he was wondering whether he should replace uh, seek with Shannon or Megan. Let's move on to the second question, which comes to us from Acrab06. Hi Ben, I have a question, man. I don't know if Gyro's passive is affected by accuracy or not. I also want to know which runes are best for him. So, Gyro, the uh, fire ninja, uh, his passive is not affected by accuracy. It's just a random number numbers game. It's either it works or it doesn't. It's only a 50% chance uh, for it to activate. So um, for him, what I would do uh, for the rune set is to build them all straight damage. All right, as much damage as possible. 
I'm talking about like Rage Blade or Fatal Blade with attack percent on a, a two, crit damage on a four, and then attack percent on six. And what you wanna do is you wanna look for crit and crit damage substats, more on the crit, uh, crit rate, and then a little bit less on the crit damage. But uh, yeah, uh, put as much damage as you can on him. Cool, cool. And uh, Damien Johnson wanna know what runes are best for uh, the Awakened Wind Inferno? Uh, the Wind Inferno? Uh, I read over his skills, and to me, it seems like he should be an attacker. Uh, straight out, all damage. Um, Fatal Blade or Rage Blade with attack percent on two, crit damage on four, and attack percent on six. Um, I like the Rage Blade more uh, because his third skill does not affect, or uh, is not affected by um, elements and it's like a 50% crit or it's always a crit or something like that so he would be able to do a lot of damage with a rage blade set damien go set up that beast and our next question is what is the best way to farm the essence orbs to awaken your team uh the best way to farm essences is you have to kind of look on the uh, the stages, not the, or not the stages, you know the B whatever uh, part, and you want to be able to farm uh, B2, B4, B7, and B10. Um, those are the best stages to farm, uh, mainly because they are the most uh, energy efficient stages. Because if you notice, B1 and B2 has the exact same energy b3 and b4 is the same energy uh, b5 b6 and b7 is the same energy and uh, b8 b9 and b10 is the same energy so you want to be able to do the highest stage in that energy bracket that you can um, for instance uh, if you uh, um, if you could only farm or the highest stage let's say on any dungeon that you could do is let's say b5 all right, I wouldn't even be farming B5. I'll actually go down to B4 and farm that just because of the energy efficiency and the easiness of the stage. It, to me, it's not worth it to farm B5 or B6 because, you know, just the energy efficiency and the difficulty. And to me, the uh, drop rate is probably the same. From B6 to B7 is quite, quite different. Um, the drop rate supposedly jumps up a lot and also the difficulty jumps up a lot so so unless you could farm b7 i wouldn't even worry about b5 or b6 i'll just farm b4 just for the energy uh, efficiency and the, the drop rate and um, the uh, easiness of the stage um, same thing with uh, b8 or b9 if you could, even though you beat those and you're able to beat those you know 100 percent I wouldn't farm in those. I'll farm B7. Until you can actually get a team to farm B10. I could do B10, but I don't even do B10. I just stick to B7. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that for that question. It's just uh, find out what stage you're able to do um, efficiently and fast um, in whatever energy bracket you can do. So uh, to list off again is B2. B4, B7, and then B10 are the best stages to farm, all right? Our next question is from Gabriel who wonders if he should replace his Berit with his Vampire Rune Ramagos and what runes are best for Tesher. I believe that's the Wind uh, Phoenix. I couldn't really answer the first part of it because I don't know what element the Perit is. Um, for defense wise, I rather have Ramangos on defense. Uh, I really don't like him on uh, offense because because uh, unless he gets attacked all the time or if you're running into an AOE team, he kind of just sits there and does no damage until somebody attacks him. So um, putting him on defense is a little bit better in my opinion. Um, and then I really 
don't know about the uh, vampire. I've never seen a vampire ruined Romangos. I'm pretty sure it might be pretty good. Uh, just to go off of his, uh, his uh, third skill. But uh, I've never seen one, so I can't really comment on that. Um, so for uh, Tesher, the uh, Wind Phoenix, uh, I really like the Rage Blade or the Violent Blade rune set. Um, Fatal Guard, uh, for Guard runes, I really don't like Guard runes because there's so many, so many of the top tier attackers can ignore defense. So even with that Guard, it does you nothing. You want, you want all HP. And um, to rune uh, Tesher, like I said, Rage Blade or Violent Blade with attack percent on two, crit damage on four, and attack percent on six. And um, until you can farm Violent, I would actually stick with the Rage Blade just because her third ability uh, is able to, um, you're able to use that third ability again next turn if you kill somebody. So you want her to do as much as much damage as possible. And we have a doctor in the house and the next question is from him, Dr. Phone. For Fuko, um, I don't know if the counter attack, I think that's the Nemesis rune. Um, yeah, I think the counter attack's Nemesis, but I don't think Nemesis actually counts as his turn. Um, I may be wrong, but I haven't tested the Nemesis. Because if Nemesis is a counterattack, it's not it's technically not Fuko's turn. And the only way Fuko gets a, uh, a a shield is if it's his turn. So um, the way I would rune Fuko is uh, either swift energy or violent energy with the speed HP, HP, or HP percent on all. So you can kind of choose from those builds um, because you want him to be fast so he can get his uh, his shield up but you want him to have a lot of HP so he can last uh, I really don't think Fuku, uh, Fuku is made to attack he's just made to he's kind of like Rina you, you just build him to just sit there and to soak up a lot of damage so um, and also with this passive uh, he's able to slow uh, other people so and then um, with his second ability I think he's able to stun or something like that so uh, you want him to be fast and have a lot of health so you can choose from either the two of those builds um, for defense uh, perfect defense lineup for arena um, to me there is no perfect defense um, you will always lose you will win some and you'll lose some but there is no perfect defense um, the only way to, in my opinion, to build a defense is to build it tanky that has a lot of self-sustaining like heals, um, maybe a revive in there. And you want to, um, this is more later down the line, uh, kind of depends on the monsters you have. But uh, mostly people run um, an attack defense, but you know, as uh, once you get to end game where you don't have to, uh, awaken stuff anymore all you do is farm giants all day every day and then maybe pick a day out of the out of the week and make six stars all day that's what you do uh, for the end game because that's what i'm doing and i'm pretty sure that's what the top players do um and you just make six stars all, uh, every week and farm giants or dragon's lair every every day and uh, it will be a lot easier after that to make a defense a good defense um, but to me uh, a tanky defense that has uh, self-sustaining you know whether it be heals a lot of heals um, a reviver and um, you want to try to build uh, with uh, people with the uh, HP type you know whether it be a uh, fire death knight Chloe's uh, wind death knight you know Amon uh, living armor is a good one uh, Romangos, um, any of the uh, Monkey Kings, the Beast Monks, um, anything that has an HP type or a defense type, you know, that's what you stick on your defense. But, you know, like I said, there's, there is no perfect defense, um, mainly because our defense is controlled by AI. 
and uh, the AI, excuse me, is very stupid. So, um, and uh, let's see for the win Undyne, I like um, all energy with crit substats. Uh, you want to build her tanky. And uh, the reason you want crit substats is her first skill um, is like a stun or something on every time you crit or something like that. So I just like to build her tanky. Um, she just needs to stay there and uh, provide the uh, immunity support. But All right. And Dr. Phone also asked, what is 1 plus 5? Duh, 15. And uh, what is the name of his cat? And I think uh, that's Meow. Moving on. Um, let's see, number seven. What is the most effective way to spin your crystals? This question is kind of like a 50-50. Uh, it kind of depends on where you're at in the game and what type of monsters you have, right? So if you have nothing but just weak monsters, uh, you want to be buying uh, the premium summons or you can do crystal summons. It just depends on how you're, how patient you can be. But you want to summon at least, you know, two to three good popular monsters, all right? You can go to any of the websites, any of the forums to find the, uh, the most popular monsters or you can ask in game. Um, there was a chart uh, that I still use to this day to find out the popular monsters of uh, each um, monster, yeah, of each monster, you know, whether it be like an Inferno, whatever, of each monster type, there's always a popular version of it. So that's what I would choose. Um, like I said, I would just choose, wait until you get two to three of the good monsters, make a team out of it, and, you know, work on your dungeon, you know, whatever. But, uh, Keep buying the premium and keep buying um, or spending your crystals on summons until you have built a good four man squad for PvP and another fifth person for uh, dungeons. All right. And um, after that, uh, especially if you're higher up, I would um, I would use your crystals on XP, uh, the XP booster and um, energy refills so you can boost those guys up to six star and um, you know getting them ruined up and working your way through uh, through the arena brackets because these arena brackets don't don't take them lightly all right these are the best ways to get crystals all right so if you can kind of make your way up to either a, a, a conqueror or a guardian or whatever and you can kind of do that every week. That's a lot of gems. It's a lot of gems. You might think it's not a lot, but it's a lot. And uh, like right now, I don't even spend anymore. I haven't spent in like two, one to two months now. And I'm doing fine with gems, um, especially since I'm getting up there to, uh, you know, conquer and guardian. So I don't even spend on gems anymore. But that's the best way to spend gems um, if you are a spender and you do have good monsters what I would do uh, depending on how much you spend is uh, refresh the shop for six star runes and getting them powered up that's the one of the second best way to spend your crystals if, if you already have a nice team and they're six stars but you're kind of missing the runes I would refresh the shop and uh, refreshing the shop will also give you a lot of mystical scrolls too as well so um, number eight um, is Neil, Lucia, Wayne, Hellhound a good team um, if that's the best you got then it's a good team uh, but if it's not then no it is not um, you really have no no attackers it's a little bit too much on the supports and uh, to me it's not very good but if it's the only monsters you have then yeah it's it's a good team <laughs> and then uh, number nine I will pick the uh, wind magical archer uh, ruined up with rage blade she does tons and tons of damage all right awesome awesome thanks buddy for the input the hard work and I'm pretty sure our subscribers and viewers will put those answers to good use 
And uh, before we end this first episode of Ask a Sensei, these are, I have some announcements uh, that I would like to make. So starting from next week, I don't know if you guys remember, but I mentioned it before, MGA, Mobile Game Awards, the videos will start uh, coming out next weekend. So starting from next weekend, and you guys will be able to vote for your favorite games in each section. Also, I will have a guest, and this time it's gonna be a live hangout. So with video, you guys are gonna be able to sit down with us, chill, hang out, just you know, have a have a nice, uh, relaxed time. And also, you guys, you guys can also ask questions, and it's all live. And if you are subscribed, you will get the invitation for this. And uh, that's about it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed watching it i would like again to thank my guest drago thanks so much man really appreciate it and uh, you guys can check out his videos i'll leave a link in the description you can also check out some of my other videos if you haven't yet i would love to have you subscribe and see you next time